The Accidental Entrepreneur is produced by Beinhacker Law and brought to you through our affiliate relationships with the following sponsors. One of One Productions, the New Jersey-based podcast studio that produces and edits both audio and video podcasts. They sell equipment for the average podcaster and have even created a guesting kit exclusively for our listeners. North Authentic, the conscious hair care marketplace offering the cleanest brands from around the world. The Healthy Place, the e-commerce site with thousands of supplements to help you live a healthier life, along with natural solutions for chronic pain, stress, anxiety, depression, sleeplessness, and much, much more. And be sure to support the podcast by ordering some logo merchandise from our online store. Listen to all of our sponsors' commercials later in this episode and follow their links in the show notes to learn more about their products and services. I've been doing ministry all those years, so I, you know, I read, um, I actually have a, uh, um, I, I got a master's degree in theology when I was in ministry, and then I went back to school, and I always led large teams, so I, I actually went back to school and got a doctorate um, in leadership as well, and so um, uh, I, I guess I read, somebody gave me Gary Keller's uh, Millionaire Real Estate Agent yeah. book, and I read sure. it, and I'm like, dang, build a team, Zig Ziglar. I've always loved Zig Ziglar's whole idea. You can have everything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. Yeah, miss him. He's a great guy. Oh, so good. Yeah, yeah. And so I just was like, okay, well, I know I can help people, you know, do better. So we just created a team and started growing this team out. And uh, Keller? Yeah, with Keller Williams. So you were an agent with, you got your real estate license, you were an agent with Keller. Yeah. And yeah. we just started growing that out. And then from there, we opened a title company, a mortgage company, a hard money lending company, insurance Got company, it. Uh, you know, all like all these different companies, like a flipping company, a holding company, a, uh, you know, all like, like but everything all related to the real estate. The information provided in these episodes is for entertainment purposes only. It is not a guarantee of success or to be construed as advice of any kind. You should always seek advice from local licensed professionals before making any decisions. The dictionary defines an entrepreneur as a person who organizes and manages any enterprise, especially a business, usually with considerable initiative and risk. People often start a business without much choice, perhaps due to a job loss or just being dissatisfied at work, and they come up with an idea they just know can be successful. They become entrepreneurs by accident. That is to say their success or failure happens by accident, not with intention. My name is Mitch Beinhacker. I'm a corporate attorney and a business advisor. You're listening to The Accidental Entrepreneur, my podcast about how to achieve success on purpose, not by accident. Join me along with our monthly guests where we share our knowledge and help you get a hold of your business. And now on to today's episode. Hey, everybody. This is Chris Craddock. I'm based out of the D.C. area. I am mainly in the real estate world, but I own 13 businesses, all with wealth building in mind uh, based in real estate. A number of them are seven-figure businesses. And so excited to be here with you today. Okay. Welcome to another episode of The Accidental Entrepreneur, where you're, if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast directory and they allow us allow you to give us a rating, please give us a five-star review. And if you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button so we can keep bringing valuable, interesting conversations to the people that need it, especially the one we're going to have today. So I want to welcome my guest, Chris, Chris Craddock. You said you're in the DC area. We're going to talk about real estate investing, all the other companies that you're involved in and your entrepreneurial journey. And uh, thanks for thanks for joining me today. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me here. Looking forward to this. Good, good. Well, let's go back because you, you mentioned in your opening that you uh, do own 13 businesses. I'm sure you didn't start them all at the same time and going on. So I'd like to hear when we go back to where you're from, you know, what your how you got inter- interested in business, entrepreneurship, what kind of training you have. Maybe it's all self-taught. I don't know, but it's your story. So you start telling it there. Yeah. So, you know, I got, uh, I graduated college in 2000. I went on staff. I just happened to actually be wearing a, a young life shirt, but, uh, I went on staff in the organization called young life. And, uh, um, you know, I loved it, but it was, it was a ministry for, you know, high school kids and made very little money. Actually, uh, my wife just handed me a tax return from 2004 or left it here, which is just so crazy looking at, I mean, the fact that I make way more every single month than I did in a year back then, um, you know, I, actually, I mean, I doubled my income by 2004, but uh, in 2003, um, 
you know, I, you know, I was making 20 to $25,000 a year yeah. and um, my wife got pregnant. We wanted her to stay home. And so I, st- I just went to the library, checked out every book I could find on, um, on investing. And, you know, I read all these books about real estate investment, about flipping. And I just went yeah. out and started knocking on doors and somehow made, uh, you know, 12 times what I made in a year, you know, right. in, uh, in the next four months. And so you were, that was in the DC area? Yep. That was in the DC area. Okay. And you're just literally knocking on like what homeowners to buy their homes or what, what were you doing? People that were going up for foreclosure. Yeah. Ah, And just said, just said, Hey, you know, I see you have a foreclosure date on, you know, X date, you have a plan and they'd be like, uh, right. Like you want to sell your house. (laughs) Yeah. So you, so you would kind of get them out from under the debt, make a little bit of money in the process and uh, start building it from there. So then you owned the home and they were renting from you. What was the, what was no. The- so I was, I just was flipping. So it was before, I mean, I mean, I had no, I had very little money. So I was right. like piecing together everything I had. I didn't know what I was doing as far as contracts go. So like right. I just found a real estate agent and was like, Hey, I found this guy that wants to sell. I don't know. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. And, uh, you want to just split the deal? Cause I think it looks like a really good deal. And, you know, it it was the first time. So I was, I created a JV, a joint venture relationship with somebody that before I even knew what a JV relationship (laughs) was. Right. And uh, we just, we split it and it was before 08. So we could buy a commercial loan or a commercial loan with 5% down. So, you know, at the time, I think the first one we bought was like $130,000. So we had a little piece together like 10 grand or whatever right, it was right, for closing costs uh, or whatever. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so we were able to do that, borrow, beg and steal like everything to get 10 grand. And we made the first one and then, then made another one and then made another one. And anyway, um, so made a bunch of money. And then um, I just continued to do a ministry for a while and I've got six kids. So money started God running out right. really fast. <laughs> so, um, so then I, uh, I I got back into flipping houses, and then one thing led to another. And uh, in uh, December 2014 is when we started our uh, real estate team. And then um, as that grew, we were able to build all these other businesses from that. Like that was got the it. wheel that spilled. So up until then, it really wasn't formal. You were just kind of like bird dog and deals all over the place. Just find, yeah, finding Scrappy. deals. So, yeah. so I did a bunch of deals early and then I stopped because I made a bunch of money. I bought yeah. the house that we live in now. We're actually going to be able to keep this. I bought it in 06, right? The uh, worst time to ever buy, but this yeah, house is going right. to be paid off in a in a right. year and a half. And it's worth twice as much as it was when I bought it before yeah. the biggest crash in the history of all crashes. Yeah, you bought high and well, you didn't sell it, but if you sold it, yeah. I would have been low. So yeah, but then, uh, but yeah, so so that was the whole thing. I took a break from all that, continued doing ministry, and then, you know, when the money started running out, I had to do something to <laughs> start making money again. Right. And in those days, the idea was you 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 found a homeowner was in distress, right? You bought the property from them, got them out from under it, and then uh, at fair market value, I assume, right? But there was there was equity. Not there. fair market. No, not fair market. Right. No, you because- were buying it for like the cost of the mortgage. Yeah, well, they were they were distressed, right? So right. what I would do is find out how much they owed, and actually, uh, I'll t- well, I, I'll tell you what I did, but I'll tell you my like the most awkward situation I've ever been in my life was the second one. <laughs> but I found out how much they owed, and then yeah. just said, "How much do you want to walk away with on top of that?" And so sometimes they say five grand, like which the first one, the guy said, "If you can give me five grand in my pocket, I'm good." And I'm like, "Okay, well, you owe this much. Okay, done." And then. Right my agent buddy, like just drew it all up and then we were good. The second one, it was so funny. I still remember it was this townhouse about 20 minutes away. We go out there and I'm sitting there and this lady and this, I guess the husband were sitting across the table from me. And, uh, I was like, so how much do you like, so you owe this much, how much do you want to walk away with? And she was like, (laughs) So we owe X number of dollars. She's like, did I want that much money for the house? Because I don't want to cent over that because I don't want him to get one penny out of this house. Really? <laughs> Obviously he had done something. To- <laughs> okay. And so I was like, okay. okay. So I mean, and then I was like, everybody good with this. And he's like, literally the whole time he's just looking at his feet. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. He got caught doing something, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. uh, so yeah, yeah. I guess men note to self, don't, don't be that right, guy. Exactly. Um, but, uh, um, but yeah, that was, that was the deal there. And then they, 
yeah, signed and I made a bunch of money there. But yeah, so that you was pay the, the mortgage thing. off, you get the property cleaned up, and now there's equity there. Yeah. And so then I just then resold it, flipped the property, made a bunch of money, and then that was that was it on to on to the next one. Okay. So then in 2014, that was when you kind of put a team together. Where did the team come from? Yeah. So um so I've been doing ministry all those years. So I, you know, I read, um, I actually have a uh um I, I got a master's degree in theology when I was in ministry, and then I went back to school and I always led large teams. So I, I actually went back to school and got a doctorate um in leadership as well. And so um uh I, I guess I read somebody gave me Gary Keller's uh, millionaire real estate agent yeah. book, and I read sure. it and I'm like, dang. Build a team, Zig Ziglar. I've always loved Zig Ziglar's whole idea. You can yeah. have everything you want in life if you help enough other people He's get the what greatest. they want. Yeah, miss him. He's a great guy. Oh, so good. Yeah. yeah. And so I just was like, okay, well, I know I can help people, you know, do better. So we just created a team and started growing this team out. And you uh, with Keller? Yeah, with Keller Williams. So you were an agent with you got your real estate license. You were an agent with Keller. Yeah. And yeah. we just started growing that out. And then from there, we opened a title company, a mortgage company, a hard money lending company, insurance Got company, it. Uh, you know, all like all these different companies, like a flipping company, a holding company, a, uh, you know, all like, like they're all related to the real estate industry, right? They all kind of complement each other and right. got it, got it, got it. Right. So you had to go. So the title company, were you just a partner in that? You had to go get your title license. No, you know, and that was, again, I love Gary Keller. I was in his small group before, before I transitioned to EXP, I was in a small group of yeah. uh, the top agents at, at Keller Williams. We rose really fast. And uh, um, so I was able to be mentored by Gary for a while. And uh, one of the things I remember him saying is you can have as many businesses as you want, as long as they're all in a folder, right? And there's somebody's face that's in charge of that folder. And that face is not your face, right? <laughs> so that's um, a good rule. Yeah. And so I, you know, my, my business partner actually was, it was for title. The interesting thing was he was an attorney building a law firm and it was growing really fast. And we were at our church just cooking dinner for the young adults. And we just started talking about title and he's like, Hey, you know, you want to open a title company? I was like, yeah, let's do it. (laughs) So then we opened a title company and, you know, my team is doing so many transactions now that like, it it just basically. You write your own title basically. Yeah. yeah, It paid for everything. And then we could build it from there. Right. It's a lot easier when you're not running to, for your life to pay the bills to start a company. Right. When like you already have a baseline of, of revenue. So that was really, really great. And then, yeah, one thing led to another and that was it. So basically people shouldn't like have their wife quit their job and then have no money and then run around knocking on doors, trying to find deals to do. You probably didn't sleep a lot in those days. I'll just say this, <laughs> lead with revenue, lead with revenue. That yeah. is the whole key in life. You know, so many people, they think that they're going to do great. And they spend all right. this money. I, I mean, I just was talking to a buddy of mine who, you know, spent $50,000 on a Salesforce and uh, $5,000 a month on, on a Salesforce subscription for a CRM when like literally a, a, $200 a month CRM right. and just totally fine. But they were building this thing for what they wanted to be. But I'm like, lead with revenue, man, bring, bring yeah. in the dollars and then, and then upgrade right. do that. <laughs> yeah. I, was told, I told you that I interviewed a guy before this who used to be in the DC area and he's in real estate, different side of the business, but same thing. And he had a job at the time and he did the real estate and he built up his equity and he, you know, he started building up cash. So he didn't go into this thing and he had a strategic plan and slowly migrated out into into what he's doing. But yeah, I mean, you know, you come to the, look, it's, it's great to go to these seminars and they're like, you know, no money down. You can do it with other people's money. You can flip. Okay. That's fine. If you're young and you're working your ass off, but you can't do that forever. And it's yeah. very risky. Yeah. No, you, I mean, <laughs> I mean, and I get it, you know, Mark Cuban, what lived in his car for, for a little while. Right. Like, you know, I mean, I, I get it. I mean, you know? should do that. It yeah. He had to do it. Right. He didn't do it by choice. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's it. That's it. No, I was going to say, so, so we're in 2014. So then, so when did you start building these other companies? It just happened over, over the years as you acquired more real estate and flipped and did different things. Yeah. So, you know, we, we continued to flip properties. I continued to pick up real estate. So one of the things, if you're a real estate professional, um, there are some massive tax benefits to holding on to real estate. Um, yeah. You can take all of your depreciation or most, the majority of your depreciation in year one um, yeah. with cost segregation, which a lot of people don't so realize. So you start doing cost seg too. 
Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot right. of people don't realize you can do that as a real yeah. estate professional. And so, you know, when when I have like CPA saying, "Hey, buy more properties, and you'll be able to keep like, you know, twenty to forty thousand dollars of that property that you would have paid to Uncle Sam," yeah. you know, and just keep it now. I'm like, oh man. So it just like like all these little pieces just started coming together, and all all that happened. As like I joined masterminds, I worked hard uh-huh. to level up and and network with other high high minded high business minded friends because you know every single time you're you're hanging with people that are are further along than you are or people right. that are really you're, you're gonna so you're gonna soar right I mean absolutely hang absolutely. out with turkeys and you'll go the other direction <laughs> yeah exactly right yeah right yeah and yeah, it's well, a lot about networking and building relationships and what yeah, you learn first- is who you know and who you meet along the way. The first mastermind I ever joined, right? It, it cost, you know, what did it cost? Something like, I mean, it's like 18 grand a year is, is yeah. like the total for it or whatever. But that first year, I can attribute, you know, over over a quarter million dollars in top line revenue um, just because of the the ideas and the information that I learned from that. And I just I just realized it's a game changer, right? Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Just uh, I know I don't want to get too off track, but just for people listening, if we can explain quickly what cost segregation is, I mean, I know what it is and sure. uh, it applies only to commercial properties. So you can't do it on a residential building that you own. Well, I guess if you're a passive investor, you can, right? Well, you, and if any, any investment property, you just appreciating the systems in the house. Right? <laughs> yeah. If you're real, you can do it. Yeah. You can do it on, on, um, I, I'm doing them on, on residential. So okay. the 2017 tax code, it changed so that um, any property where the structure itself is worth less than five hundred thousand okay. um, dollars, you can do a desktop and a, a. I think it has to be an engineer, but you can an engineer can do a desktop cost seg on that property, which makes it less expensive. In the past, you do a five hundred thousand dollars property; it wasn't worth the money yeah. it would cost to do cost seg. And and so let's this- explain what cost segregation is and how it affects depreciation. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Basically, you know, there's there's the government decided that the life of all the materials inside of a property is about 27 and a half years, right. uh, which, yeah, we don't need to get into why they decided 27 and a half years. But basically, the, you will fully de- depreciate your, your uh, the the interior, the property of the home over 27 and a half which years. Is very and long and you don't get a lot of tax benefits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, right. present day value of money versus like over 27 and a half years, like it's just not that much. But if if you were to take almost all of it now, it's not all of it, but the majority of it in year one, which is uh, an accelerated depreciation where where an engineer values the value of everything so that you can Separately. take it all in year one. Right. Yeah. If you are a real estate professional, you can take it against both active and passive income. If you're not a real um, estate professional, you can only take it against passive income. So it's an exception just for real estate professionals? Yeah, and that doesn't mean real estate agent. It just means somebody that, I think it's 750 hours a year. That you're investing in, in the real estate business, investing, running, managing properties, whatever it is. Here's a word from our sponsors. Looking to get into podcasting? Maybe to market your business for your own enjoyment or because you have a message you want to get out there. One of One Productions is a New Jersey-based studio just over the George Washington Bridge that caters to the booming business of podcasting. They offer a comfortable atmosphere using the latest technology available to record your podcast. And they are a full-service media company offering both audio and video production services, creating both audio and video podcasts as well as video shorts for business and personal use. Professional audio equipment packages are available through their website for all budgets, and be sure to check out their podcast guesting kit created specially for our listeners. Care for your health, care for the planet, and look flipping great doing it. North Authentic is a conscious hair care marketplace offering the cleanest brands from around the world. Their pro stylists curate only the most fabulous non-toxic hair products with better for you shampoos, serums, masks, and more that actually give you gorgeous hair without hurting your health or the planet. Hey, you've only got one life, one planet, and one glorious mane. Might as well treat them all as best you can, right? Try a 100% clean hair care routine prescribed just for you using their link in the show notes. If you don't see a big, beautiful difference in how your hair looks and feels, you can tell them they're crazy. Do you battle chronic pain, stress, anxiety, or depression? 
Well, if you take any supplements or you're interested in natural alternatives, you need to know about findyourhealthyplace.com. Find Your Healthy Place has thousands of supplements to help you live a better quality of life, as well as natural solutions for chronic pain, stress, anxiety, depression, sleeplessness, and much, much more. Need guidance? Use their live chat feature and talk to a wellness consultant right on their website. And be sure to use our coupon code TAE Podcast for all your purchases to get the best prices at findyourhealthyplace.com. Follow their links in the show notes to learn more about all of our sponsors. And now back to our show. Yeah, reading about real estate and like educating right. yourself. So there's, I mean, the bar is super low right. on that. And right. so, yeah, so you you can take that. And um, there was a book called Tax-Free Wealth that I read that was just massive in my understanding of like, oh my gosh, it's not about being like super aggressive with your taxes or super, you know, you know, conservative with your taxes. It's about finding people that understand the tax code and yeah. telling you that the government gives you incentives to do certain things. And right. it's not illegal. It's not aggressive. It's not in a gray. Cost yeah. Mitigation is, yeah. So just so people know. What basically you're doing is you're sep- separating, segregating out the different systems in the building. It might be the HVAC system, maybe the windows, maybe the flooring, maybe the roof. And those things don't get depreciated over 27 and a half years. They get depreciated on their own schedule. So HVAC system might be, you know, eight years. Another one might be six years. And this and that would accelerates all the depreciation into the year, first few years. Yeah. And and that's why you can essentially in year one, I mean, you're looking at like a just a massive amount of money um, right. on the property. So like so to to be able to do it from a desktop, if the structure, so maybe you buy a seven hundred thousand dollar house, right. like maybe it's a single family, but if the the land is worth more than two hundred thousand, so that the structure is worth five hundred or less, you can do it from a desktop. And then you're looking at paying somewhere between five and six hundred bucks to uh to have yeah, a, the appraisal that you need yeah. right 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 oh so the land gets deducted right because you only depreciate the building right so it's, it's powerful i mean literally yeah I'll, I'll say you know multiple six figures a year just on on purchasing properties and then cost segs um right it, it's just really really super powerful and then, and then it it forces you to to buy reinvest yes yeah. right right <laughs> yeah because if you if you take money that you earn and you buy a property that's not deductible that's a capital expense so you're buying the building, you you still pay the tax on the income, you can only do it on the net. But if you actually can cross seg and use the government's money as part of the investment in the building, just keep rolling it over. Yeah. And then here's the crazy thing, you know, because I'm a real estate agent. And if somebody, if you become a real estate agent and you market off market, you can take your cost seg, you find off market properties where people are selling at a discount. Right. And you just you just say, okay, you want three hundred thousand dollars. Great. I'm going to. Uh, um, I know the property's worth, you know, four hundred, four fifty, whatever it is. I'm going to raise. I'm going to have a high commission on here, right. you know, and then have the commission, have the broker sign off so that that commission can be credited towards your down payment, right? So you get a uh, money towards the down payment, and you get your cost segregation, which essentially means you can buy a house with almost no cash at all out of pocket. And as long as you're buying at the right price, you'll be, you know, almost no cash out of pocket and you'll be making money on the property, um, you know, every month. Somebody will be paying it down for you. Right. You'll be, you know, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. It's the magic flow. of real estate, right? Yeah. It's yeah. incredible. If you learn what you're doing. Yeah. Um, I was going to mention, you just sent something. Oh, yeah. So you, so you said you find these off-market distressed properties. Well, they're distressed probably because of some situation in the person's life, right? They're in foreclosure, getting divorced, some other issues going on, right? So it's not that the property, if it's 300000 it's worth four fifty. It's not worth four fifty until you clean up that problem, whatever it happens to be, right? Not always. I mean, there's a, there's a situation right now that I'm aware of where... Um, they're, they've got a lien against their house that they've had for a long time, and they have about a week to uh, to settle that lien, which they don't have the cash to settle it. It's about seventy six thousand dollars, which they don't have that that cash to settle it, or it'll go to foreclosure, right? And so, right. Um, so somebody just brought it to me and said, "Hey, um, you know, if you have this seventy six thousand dollars in cash, 
we could do a sale where they'll sell at an extreme discount, but it'll be much better than them losing their, their property to foreclosure. So I get a good deal. I get a great deal and they don't lose their property foreclosure. So even though it doesn't feel like a win, it's selling at a discount. It's definitely a win compared to the alternative. So, right. you know, that's why distressed properties are great because if you saw the people who make the most money are the people that solve the most problems. And so if I'm solving the problem that puts it into distress, then right. that's the deal. But then there's also houses that are in such bad condition that, you know, yeah, like, it, you know, there's mold in the house, the roof right. is falling in, you know, a tree fell on it. So you have a company that does all that stuff. Well, you know, I do have a construction company as well, but my construction company doesn't do our own stuff. They do more high end stuff. Um, Got so it. I that's just right. have, I have some contractors that and do you stuff just bring in. in. You said, I don't want my people going to breathe in mold. You can breathe the mold. <laughs> right. <laughs> You just sure. yeah, now was was that by design because the, the, there's not a lot of money in fixing up the house. It's better to subcontract them, get them done, and flip it. And there's more money in your com- company doing higher end stuff. What what was the thought about that? Yeah, you know, as far as construction is concerned, I mean, I'll, I'll just tell you the the margins on a bathroom or or you know a bathroom or a kitchen are about fifty percent. And okay. so high end bathroom, you're looking at like a master bathroom, anywhere from 50 to $80,000, right? Like even a hundred thousand dollars. And with 50% margins, that's, that's awesome on fix and flip, you know, on, on the deals that I'm fixing and flipping, I, I want speed. I'm not looking right. for high end. I'm not looking like, like for a, a homeowner that's paying $80,000 for, for a bathroom. We still want to do it quickly, but you right. want to do it well, where they say, wow, for a flip, you want to do it quick and efficiently. And so that's, that's the key, you know, so it's a different skill set. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, it makes sense. It makes sense. What are, since you told me a story before about something where you're in a situation, what are one of the, a few like mistakes you felt you learned, you, you made along the way and, and learned from them that you wouldn't uh, do again again? Mm, man, I mean, <laughs> where do we start, right? I mean, yeah, people make mistakes. That's why I like to share stories. It's that's part of life. I think you learn more making mistakes than if you did it right all. Yeah, I, I'd say one is lead with revenue, right? If hey, just that was a good one. There was a there's a book that I read that I thought was really incredible. It's called Thinking in Bets from a, okay. a professional poker player. And the whole idea, did you ever play any Texas Hold'em? Uh yeah, a little bit, not not regularly. All right. So like, I'm not a, I'm not a great poker player, but I've, I played a bunch with my buds. Right. And uh, you know, a seven, two offsuit is probably one of the worst hands that you can get in poker. Right. Okay. But if you play the seven, two offsuit every once in a while, you're going to win, right. You're, you're three set, two sevens are going to drop, you know, two, two deuces are going to drop and you're going to have three of a kind and you're going to win the hand. Well, the whole idea is behind it is sometimes there's just luck. And if we, get lucky in an area and then build a business around a losing hand. um, I think we get hurt really badly. And I think that's what a lot of entrepreneurs do because entrepreneurs have to be optimistic. Otherwise they would never start a business when the failure rate is like 70% of a new business. (laughs) Like there's no way we would start businesses if we weren't optimistic. Right. And didn't believe we could defy the odds. So the reality is we do something you know, and I did this. Um, we bought up, we bought some DC development properties and made really good money in spite of ourselves, but I didn't realize it was in spite of ourselves. And okay. so we went massively big, bought a ton. Like I got myself into $10 million worth of debt owed. Um, and uh like honestly, we realized we just were not doing it well. It was not <laughs> systematic, we couldn't get out of these very fast. And legitimately almost lost everything. Thankfully the yeah. real estate market was still pretty strong back then. Um otherwise like if we were in a if we were in today's market which has a more downward trend. Right, if you were hitting 0708 where things just crapped out, it would have been done. I would right? have been bankrupt. But yeah. thankfully it was going up. So as we were holding it longer, like the even though we were paying lots of money for this every single yeah. month, um the market was kind of solving some of the problems so you know it ended up costing me almost a million bucks you know 660,000 bucks for me personally not not including my partners to get out of these things but yeah. um jim collins calls it uh the hubris born of success so that was that whole idea that you know we had a little bit of success we even though we weren't playing a winning hand we thought it was a winning hand and so then right. we, we could make everything and so we went big and then got ourselves in trouble 
So, so what, what's the lesson there that you have to, yeah. What is the lesson? I think the, well, I know the lesson, the <laughs> lesson is make sure you're lead, like get the revenue, right. make sure evaluate what you're doing, make sure that it wasn't just a lucky one off, like a seven, two offsuit. And then once you, once you have proven the system, right. you can nail it and then scale it. Right. And, and stick to your system. Yeah. Don't if you start if you if you have a little pile of crap that you don't realize is a uh, polished up turd, right? And you, you make it a bigger it turd. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, then you got all these piles of turd everywhere, and then yeah. you're in trouble, right? And so so just make sure that it's you know what you have, and you're not like just just scaling a big polished turd. <laughs> right, believing that you could build it, and they would come and just go in all kinds of debt, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I think that's the the biggest piece is 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 make sure that's the deal because you got to be an optimist, like to for a 70% failure rate of business, you got to be an optimist to start. Right. And, right. and, and even the champion, right. I, like I, I posted this on social media the other day, you know, the champion gets knocked down, but the champion just continues to get up, which proves why he's the champion. Right. So like right. that, that whole idea is like, you're going to get knocked down. Does that mean you're doing the wrong thing? Does that mean you need to adjust? You got to you know? evaluate. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, I think if you, if you went and and really dug into failures of, of, of businesses, it wouldn't be 70%. There would be a group of people. The reason that uh, out of the 30%, they're successful for a reason, because like you said, they lead with revenue. They plan things. They put in systems. They don't just go with their gut and say, oh, this is going to be great because they're because they're all right brain. We're all so optimistic about everything, which is to our detriment sometimes. And the ones <laughs> and the ones that plan and you know strategically do it out, they don't all get lucky like you did. Some of them get wiped, you know, wiped out. I mean, I've seen I've seen real estate companies that were so highly leveraged, thinking that they could do everything, that the, you know the wave crashed, and they're done. And they had to, you know, they have to negotiate their way out of millions of dollars of debt with banks, sign over properties, and 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 start over. And I do know some guys that have lost it and built it up and lost and built it up again. I know guys that have sold it, and then the guys they sold it to have lost it, and then they bought it back you know, stuff like that. But I think that if, I think that's the, I, I think that's a good point. What you're saying is that the lesson is that 70% doesn't apply to everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, um, it, that's a, that's a statistic that you can avoid if you are more methodical and more careful about what you do and take, what is it? Calculated risks. Is that a better? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Way to say it. Um, yeah. So do you own uh, properties just in your area or you you part of, you got deals in other parts of the country? I own one property that's like two and a half hours away. Um, and I didn't really want to uh, buy it, but I kept telling everybody else, this is a great deal, but nobody took me up on it because it was far away. And so I bought it. And I mean, the numbers were incredible, right? I bought it for $58,000. Most of my properties are much higher dollar, bought it for $58,000. I put 35 into it or 38 into it. And uh, it it appraised for 215. So I called the bank and I said, Hey, will you give me a loan for $150,000? I got a, uh, I think they ended up uh, giving me uh, because it was out of our their service area. It was a little less of a debt to income, so they gave me a loan for one hundred thirty seven thousand dollars. Right, so I made a lot. Of, I made more money to own this property, and now it's cash flowing about seven hundred dollars a month. Um, so I'm cash flowing by a lot. They gave me the money, so I, what was it like? Almost fifty grand, something like that. Fifty grand yeah. more than what I put into it, and right. because that is a refinance, it's not a taxable event. So that fifty grand was non-taxed. Right. So yeah, like, you have no money in the deal. What's your return? A seven hundred a month on a zero investment, infinite return. Huge. Infinite. Tell me that's can't better. Even, <laughs> can't even measure it. Yeah, you can't. You can't even measure. So that was a deal you did yourself. You do most of your deals with partners, with investors. Um, you know. Most of the deals I hold on to more because my wife um, likes the idea of keeping uh, uh, just having it in the family. The ones we hold, we're, we're mainly doing that there. But I'm I'm at a point right now where we're looking at doing some bigger, bigger deals, which, you know, I'll, I'll partner with some other folks. But right now, it, it's just all it's always single. been you. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you said you have a flipping company, too. So you don't always hold on to you only oh, yeah, yeah. going to cash flow. Keep the best, flip the rest. 
<laughs> Got it. And you have guys that manage them for you and you're going around or you use company right. outside company. No, you have a whole team. Yeah. Yeah. We got the team and everybody. How many, how many employees do you have? Uh, my retail real estate team, I've got 42 agents that work for me. And then, I mean, just across all the different businesses. Those are salespeople. Man. Nothing Those are salespeople. Them. And then I got something like 19 back office folks for the retail team. And like across, like we just got like people in all the different businesses. I think overall, like we're verging on like right around a hundred people in our organization right now. And is it a lot of it's virtual or do you have like an office where everybody is? We have an office, but almost everything's virtual. Like after COVID, I thought I'm I'm a big like family. I'm a, I'm a massive extrovert. So I like to be around. And right. so I didn't think that we could create good culture and not be in person. But after COVID, I realized you could do that. So yeah, we now we're all virtual. Yeah, I think uh, I, I, if we didn't have tools like this, like Zoom and stuff, I, I don't think it would have would have worked. But the fact that we're all connecting and able to see each other, because things are visual in our life, I think. Companies are finding that work at home. I, I think work at home sometimes is a detriment to the people that are doing the work. <laughs> you're working more. You're more available. You get home, you get your kids from school, you come back, got to make dinner, but you still have a call at six o'clock at night and you got stuff you got to do. And exactly. I got clients think I'm available 24 hours a day. No offense to them. <laughs> I'm not. Weekends are with my, you know, generally with my family. I have to do some stuff, but I don't, yeah, I try. I try to avoid it because I think at one point, I'm sure you were like this too. Uh, just working all the time, right? Yeah. You're just you, you're driven. You're trying to build, but then after a while, you realize that you need some downtime. You need to kind of, you know, rejuvenate yourself, and it doesn't really affect your productivity. As a matter of fact, it probably drives up your productivity. Right. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. I mean, we need. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a Christian guy, right? Like, you know, God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh, right? Like, right. I think our bodies are created. We need that that downtime. Now, yeah. I would say I'm. I'm one that struggles to take the downtime because I enjoy working and I enjoy right. doing it, but I, I'm always fighting that balance to, you know. Yeah. No, it's like you go that you can't go to the gym and work out every day. You got to right. let your body recuperate. hundred percent. You know, because you're going to hurt yourself. Right. That's how people have strokes and, and stuff like that. They work <laughs> themselves to death. Seriously. Yeah. Because they don't realize the stress they're putting on the body. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So what, um, what is the future hold for you guys? What are you, what are you, what are your plans with company in the future? Things like that, which is your strategic planning. That's going on. Well, a couple of things. So our Redux team, um, we've now expanded into a number of different markets, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Orlando. Um, we're already in Richmond and Baltimore, as well as the DC area. That's um, the, I, that's the real estate, the sales side of real estate. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And you say you're with EXP now. You're not with Keller anymore. Yeah, we moved over to EXP. And that's that's the other piece. Like I've I like heck, I did ministry for a long time. I coached high school soccer forever. I coached high school golf. I love um I love coaching. I love helping people, which you know is part of why I think our team has has grown because we we lead with value. Um, uh -huh. but yeah, with the EXP front. The cool thing is that we get to like just be in network the way they created their business. We get to be in network with real estate agents all across the country. Anybody that um, wants to build a uh, investing base retail business um, where they're investors and they're also um, they also have you know regular retail deals to buy and sell for clients. Um, man, we partner with people and help just add fuel to their fire. And it's cool because the way EXP did it, it's like a virtual brokerage where. Um, you know, we just partner with each other and any of the brokerage fees, you know, we it gets split and there's a big opportunity for anybody that wanted to partner there. So yeah, if anybody's in, in real estate and has any interest in discussing how that plays out, I would love to have the conversation with you. All right, super. Have you, you got any books that you have written, writing, working on? Uh, yeah, I've, I've got a couple that I, I really, uh, I, I'm... Anyway, I've got a couple of things that I, I'm toying with, but I haven't written <laughs> any uh, at this point. So, okay. no. All right. So we'll have to watch for that one. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. So what's the best way for people to interact with you? Is it on LinkedIn, social media, your website? Yeah. So Instagram is, is one of the best ways. Um, I've got a whole old high school cheesy nickname. That's my handle. So it's not my well, last I'll put name. all the links in the show notes. So cool. at crowd rock. But if you send me a DM, I'll, uh, um, 
you know, I'll personally reply, you know, so many people were so generous with their time. Sure. And so yeah, anybody, anybody that wants some help or anybody that I could just connect with that would be a good connection, please feel free to reach out to me. That's great. Or yeah, any of the other places, my website, my name, chriscraddick.com or Chris Craddock official on TikTok. Okay, Chris, I uh, I think we'll leave it there. You gave a lot of advice and a lot of um, good uh, recommendations. We learned a little bit about what you're doing, who you are. And uh, I thank you for, for joining me. Is it still this morning? No, it's just afternoon. So I, I thank you for joining me today. It's been awesome. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Accidental Entrepreneur. Opening and closing music written and performed by Howie Moskovich and made to order music. For more information about Howie and his music services, please follow the link in our show notes. If you like the podcast, please tell others about us. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, on Google Podcasts, on Amazon Music, Spotify, and most of the other podcast directories. If you like what you hear, please leave us a five-star review and feel free to share our episodes on social media. If you have any questions or comments, ideas for the show, or you'd even like to appear as a guest, reach out to us by email at info at bynackerlaw.com. The Accidental Entrepreneur is hosted by Mitch Beinacker and produced by Beinacker Law. If you'd like to learn more about our business and legal services, you can find us on social media or visit our website at beinackerlaw.com. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to our feed to be notified of all future episodes.